one of yours. It could be a morning in any home in the country. A few eggs, a quick breakfast, but then the medicine bag appears. It's six pills in the morning. Well, six dosage, six dosages of different medication in the morning. Some of that fresh mozzarella. That's when you know there's an unwelcome visitor in this house, cancer. Elizabeth began having severe headaches when she and her husband were newly married. I mean, when I'd stand up, I felt like someone was just clocking me in the head really hard um, and it would I'd have to sit right back down Eggs can be for dinner. in 2008 just after her daughter was born she got the news that changed the course of her life and then the doctor came back in with the five residents and they're all looking at the ground just staring at the ground uh, they looked like they were about to take a penalty shot at a soccer game and uh, my neurosurgeon said, well, the pathologists have come back early and we're going to need you to see um, our neuro-oncologist within the next week or so. And I just sat there stunned because I didn't, I didn't know what they meant. You know, they didn't use the word cancer. At heart, she's an adventurous person. She learned to ski in Colorado. She and her husband lived in Shanghai for a time. But her conversation with a brain cancer specialist put everything in her life into startling clarity. So what's my prognosis? What's, you know, I want to know. I just want to know. And he said, textbook is three to five years. And I said to him, all I all I want to do is be able to see my daughter go to her first day of kindergarten. She describes her cancer is currently on pause. She has seizures most every day. She no longer has the energy she once had. She can't drive a car, but she's making the most of each day. Together, they welcomed their son into the world, and her three to five years has become seven and counting. Seven years. I, you know, my daughter's old enough now where she'll have memories of me. And, um, you know, with Judah, I've given my husband a son. So if my cancer comes back, there's no, there's just gratefulness, thankfulness. Elizabeth's life with cancer has given her a unique perspective on the issue of assisted suicide. Our lives are not defined by what is necessarily fun. Don't tell me you didn't suffer beforehand at some point. You know, you twisted your ankle and it hurt. You know, suffering is a part of life. It doesn't mean that we need to end our lives because we're suffering. You know, if I, if I lived with that mentality, if I had that mentality, then a thousand times I would have done this because I've suffered greatly. I would have missed out on so much um, and my family would have missed out on, on my life and on the, on the beauty of, the, of what we've done and how we've lived together. I hope that people who consider this as a possibility for legislation or for themselves um, also look and say, my life is bigger than this. There are days when I cry because I know my daughter sees me suffer. Her whole life she has seen me suffer. And she's now at the age where she's starting to really understand it and question it and wonder about it. But my life is worth something to her. She'd fight for me. She wouldn't want me to be gone. My parents would be devastated. My husband would be devastated. He wouldn't, you know, how would he get the dishes done? <laughs> but he, but the ultimate piece is that we're, we're these, we're unique and unrepeatable people who need to be valued. We need to be valued and we need to value ourselves. My life is worth fighting for.